In a town like Sunnydale, you must beware of strangers. Have you ever been with a woman before? Xander is not in any immediate danger. Seduction is a powerful weapon. Buffy, next on the WB. Hi guys, welcome to yet another watch along on Balloon Head Productions. I'm your host as usual. My name is Marcelo Inestroza, and I'd like to welcome you to Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 1, Episode 4, Watch Along. All right, guys. So if you haven't been here before, what I essentially do is in about a minute, I'm going to switch over to my copy of this episode, which is on American Hulu Plus. And once I switch over there, I'm going to count down from three. And on three, I'm going to say play. And if you're watching this right now and you want to watch along on American Hulu or on your copy at home, when I say play is when at home, if you're watching along, you would press play so we would be synced up and ready to go. So uh, with no further ado, here we go as I turn off my camera. All right, guys, so I'm going to switch over now. In three, two, one, play. The usual, uh, you know, Buffy summary thing. How do you guys feel at home about that? I don't, um, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. But I know some people who have an issue with it. I, I like it. I mean, especially for the first season um, where, you know, Buffy is still trying to get its feet, is still trying to attract new viewers. And it is nice having that summary of what the TV show is about. But after a while, um, it does get kind of annoying. And I do believe that that, that opening episode summary, if that's what it's called, if that's what it's called, carries over into the next season. This is just really funny because you could tell right off the bat that this is not reality. You could tell that Xander is having uh, a a dream in which he is, you know, the knight in shining armor. He's the one that saves. He's the one that saves Buffy, and he's about to do something really cool here in just a second. And he's a rock star. Yay! He's daydreaming in class. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Also, I really like this opening tease by the writer or writers of this episode to sort of hint at what this episode is going to be about and to hint at the big secret that the big bad for this episode has. Also, I really like that this professor is the only professor that has shown positivity towards Buffy being smarter than she is when Everybody else, when when pretty much every other adult that has to do with the school at this point has questioned Buffy for her questionable path, for her questionable path, so to say. By the way, this is a brilliant miming job by uh, Willow there. <laughs> and I think that Buffy has to go to mime class. See, here we go with the positive reinforcement. We all need a, 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 a positive, we all need positive reinforcement by uh, a special teacher once in our lives. Just to tell us that we are, just to tell us that we are capable of doing the things that we achieve. Even if it's something really, really small, like completing a homework assignment or completing a grade by the end of the semester.
homework thing buffs. It'll change your life, I swear. Sometimes all you need, guys, is one person to believe in you, or in this case, one teacher to believe in you, that you are able, that you are more than capable to reach the academic heights that you strive for, even when you're Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the chosen one, the, the one that stands between the ghosts and the goblins and the monsters at the gate, like Buffy does. This is a really good push-in, sort of teasing the audience of the big bad, but I really, really like this push-in and the, the cheesy arm that's about to come into frame here. And, of course, the best theme song ever. I shall shut up and just watch it play. Hello. Okay, I lied. That's just one shout out. I love this song, guys. Um, I brought this up in previous watch-alongs that I've done. But do you guys that watch the show, for those of you who are audiophiles, do you guys like the physical score for Buffy or the score in the music, uh, the score in the music that's actually in the show? I am a guy that loves score, but I must say, the universe forgive me, the music in Buffy actually has made a deeper impact with me than the physical score for the show. I love the look there that the front man gives Xander. Of course, that has a lot of hidden story behind it. If you know, you know. If you want to know, look it up. Is that the director of like the of of uh, of the uh, of uh, the original NCIS show. What's his name? The actor, not the character, of course. This is also dropping a hat on the ground for what Xander is going to try to achieve later on in the episode, albeit how horribly wrong it's going to go for him. <laughs> I don't think they're buying it, my man. David Gordon Green, uh, his name just flashed by screen. If you're wondering, oh shit, I'm out of sync. No, you're not. I was delayed in I was delayed in reading his uh, his writer credit there.
The fourth guy. <laughs> Come on, guys. For those of you who are at home watching, is there any more kind more is there is there a type of humor that is more delightfully 90 quirky than Buffy humor? I don't even know if that's a thing. Is is Buffy humor a thing? <laughs> Word of thumb when somebody is missing in Sunnydale, it's never a good thing, guys. See, Willow backs me up. Willow backed up my positive reinforcement claim. And cue teenage boy hormones kicking in right about now. By the way, isn't it fortuitous timing that Xander just exits the school saying that the biology teacher has gone missing? And then right on cue, a new biology teacher is introduced. I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> I love how they just left him out. I love how they just leave him out there hanging there. It just is so great. Also, I think this is a hat on the ground to sort of indicate to the audience what happened to uh, the professor all. And, you know, just a push forward is a broken uh, frame of glass on his glasses as well. Also, I love how this dialogue and this speech sort of pushes the story forward into what this teacher actually is. It's good storytelling. It's it's actually story layering. So David Gordon Green for the win. Building anticipation to see this big, big old beastie. Also, what she's saying now can be played off as a double entendre in that she's a hot teacher and all the boys want to eh, essentially, you know what? And which one of you young teen boys and which one of you young teen boys is hung? Uh me. <laughs> Smoky magnetism. Yes. <laughs> so
Sweet burn, Buff. Sweet burn. And do. Oh, you're going to regret this. Does that guy look like Nicolas Cage to you? I'm just realizing that. Guys at home, if anybody ever watches that, does that guy look like Nicolas Cage? I think he looks like Nicolas Cage, but it, it might just be me. Also, the tradition of great reveal, the tradition of great reveals continues on the show. Because look, it's the it's the it's the teacher that had faith in Buffy. Oh, but guess what? We can't give her any nice things, and as a result, the science teacher is losing a head. That's a good question. I wonder who, if somebody took it, like, what, what, what do you think they did with it? Did, do you think, like, they buried it or something? If he was part of a ritualistic killing or something? I'm just spitballing here. A fork hand. Exactly. Anything and everything that's big, disgusting, and all kinds of big beastie. Oh, no, she won't. And that's my girl. Of course, do something rash. Also, the lighting in the in the night scenes um, for most of the seasons are really, really well done. But um, you can't really notice the richness of them unless you're watching on a DVD. Uh, God help you if you bought the uh, the horrible HD uh, uh, remasters that Fox did a couple of years ago. Those things were an assault to. Those things were in a those things were a assault to Blu-ray and DVD and 4K restorations in my mind. Also, as I've gotten older, um, specifically in the earlier seasons, when Buffy punches and kicks the beasties, you can actually tell what is uh, uh, when it's Sarah Michelle Geller and when it's her stunt double because her voice sounds different um, and uh, and her exertion sounds different.
That's what that's what that's the kind of uh crazy wackadoo facts that I know because I've seen the show uh so many times through. But that but but that fact is something that I kind of picked up a couple of years ago. I wonder what that's about. How 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 come it is that a creature of the night just turns tail and runs when she sees the substitute science teacher? Hmm. I wonder what that's all about. A claw fork. <laughs> nice backpedal, Joss. I mean, I mean, Giles, not Joss, sorry. Oh, look, it's Principal Flutie. I'm taking bets right now. Do you guys think he's long for this world? <laughs> what? <laughs> of course look who's getting counseling this is so predictable Oh my god. Her head is spinning around. Ah. So creepy to this day that is really unsettling. But inhuman, I think so. Research always wins the day, guys. She is so 
being so intentionally flirty right now. Not so fast, James Dean, or James, or, or Don Juan. Sorry, not James Dean, Don Juan. Ugh. Oh. oh, that's gross. Oh. oh, my God, that's really gross. Ha. Does she have shoulder pads? I don't think she has shoulder pads. Guys at home, does she have shoulder pads or no shoulder pads? Leave it in the comments. What do you think? Uh oh. Go save Xander Boy. <laughs> Not really. That's my tack to take, Giles, when Willow is doing things illegally. See, you know what? I kind of sympathize with Xander in this moment because he is not thinking logically. He's being led by his hormones. But I'm like, I'm like, dude, just listen to Buff because Buffy is actually trying to save your life. But again, in the moment when a guy is going to get some, he really has like, like he has like tunnel vision and he just wants to get some. And also, and also, um, Xander at this point in the series has a big crush on Buffy. Their their uh, boundaries as friends ha haven't been set yet. And remember that in this e oh wow she looks pretty. In this episode, um, Xander is also hung up on why Buffy is playing on nice nice with Angel, who hasn't revealed his uh, his uh, his big secret. Just yet.
And he's falling into the honey trap. Scaly. That piece of music that they use in the background with the, the scales, I think that piece of music has made the rounds in like, 90s television i think that piece of music was initially composed and created for an x-files episode <laughs> who is he calling like 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 is he calling like an insane asylum or whatever I love how I love how manically in love with Xander Willow is in the first season because she's just she's such a delorable little basket of joy. Specifically in the specifically uh, uh, in the early seasons, I'm not saying that Willow gets worse uh, as the series goes on, but she gets better. She gets a lot better, and the arc that she has later on in the series is one of the best arcs in the entire show.
Sounds like a mermaid, which he just said, or or a siren that comes out of the ocean, l- lures the the sailors with song, and then pulls them overboard, and then eats them. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't vote well and I was right he was calling an insane asylum who the hell lets their son go to their teacher's house to do a teacher's to do an assignment I mean I know this came out when the world was a the world was a the world was a was Still innocent, but even back then, guys, isn't that pushing it? But still, whatever. That's a that's a little nick pick. It's no big deal. <laughs> At least he's trying, dude. And that doesn't sound right to you, to me. Does does that sound right to you guys? Aren't we all? Not you. Any meaning my name about You know, Buff, look, I appreciate you working the problem, but time is running short here. See, this, I, I love how uh, David Gordon Green brings back what he set up in the classroom from earlier on. That's really good storytelling technique. That's like, again, that is laying a hat on the ground and picking it up later on to drive a, whole, to drive a point home with the audience.
or better than GPS, right? Buck spray? Genius. Guys, this is corny. This is corny AF, but it's the right kind of cheese, if you ask me. <laughs> the, the other side side b and for those of you or if if i have any uh young members in the audience that my friends is called a tape recorder I really love uh, the director's choice here because of the um, special effects constraints of the show. Seeing Buffy fight this thing in shadow against the wall is such a good creative tutorial choice for this episode. <laughs> Way to bear the lead, Willow. There's something erotic went by by her saying that and, and and Xander holding a machete right next to her. There's something so ironic about that. And this is a great uh, third act sort of sort of add on, kind of continuing the short scene that she had with Angel at the beginning of the episode, just pushing this story ever so forward for the big reveal later on in the season. And off he goes into the night. Uh-huh. No less.
This is a sad ending, man. But they say, uh, David Gordon Green set it up here because of that. Nice little stinger that will never come back again. All right, guys, that'll do it for my uh, watch along for Buffy the Vampire Slayer season one, episode four, entitled Teacher's Pet. And just let me do this. Hey, guys, there I am. So um, if you have sat here for this entire episode and you decided to watch this episode along with me, I appreciate you joining me. It means everything to me. But if you've seen this episode, in the comments below, if you want, tell me what you liked about it or tell me what you didn't like about it. But until next time, guys, as I often say, as I often say, as I bump, as I bump the microphone there, I'll see you when I see you. So much happened here and so much is about to.